Oh, well, what a blessing it is to be here uh, to worship with you guys here this week. It's not very often in the middle of the week I kind of do that. We usually have youth programs and things like that at the Salvation Army. And so it's nice just to be able to come and worship with other believers, other saints. And praise God. Thanks for highlighting those that have gone before us, uh, that have paved the way for us to do what we do. Um, and each of the uh, traditions and each of the um, churches, there are those that have gone before and have paved the way. And so I praise God for that this morning. Um, well, I wasn't really sure what I was getting into this morning. So here we go. Um, I, I think, uh, honestly, a lot of what was already said is going to align well with uh, what, we, um, what I'll be thinking through this morning for us. Um, but uh, I just thought, you know, the Salvation Army has 10 doctrines, or not 10 doctrines, the Salvation Army has 11 doctrines. I, I try to highlight each doctrine um, at the beginning of each month, and we always have it printed in the program so that people can read it. And so last month, the 10th doctrine for the 10th month of the year. And so I usually kind of hit on that a little bit throughout the, um, the month, and which happens to be the holiness doctrine. And so I, I just thought that I'd kind of look in some of those uh, thoughts of where we w where I was and where I was going uh, and then share some of that with us this morning. So uh, holiness. Um, I would say that um, I, I don't usually give titles, uh, but I don't know why I've kind of started doing that. It's never really been a thing of mine to give titles, uh, but I, I guess I've, I've kind of gotten in the habit of doing that now. Uh, but holiness standing apart in a conforming world. Uh, and we see that all the time now, don't we? Just conforming world. And I thought before we got started, uh, I'd start with a song from our songbook or from Salvation Army song. But I looked, it wasn't in the uh, Come Thou Fount. Um, and I, in fact, uh, the Salvation Army has added a chorus to it that um, I'm not sure it's in a lot of hymnals. Because uh, when I look it up and look for the music to it, I was like, how come it doesn't have the chorus in it? So the Salvation Army uh, has, has decided to add a chorus to it. Uh, but come thou fount, it says this, come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. And here's this unique chorus that the Salvation Army has to offer. It says, glory, glory, Jesus saves me. Glory, glory to the lamb. Oh, the cleansing blood has reached me. Glory, glory to the Lamb. In the second verse, here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. In the fourth verse, O oh, to grace how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be, let that grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wondering heart to thee. And the last verse here, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Glory, glory, Jesus saves me. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Oh, the cleansing blood has reached me. Glory, glory to the Lamb. And so when I think about holiness, we dive into that a little bit this morning. I know that uh, WBS has a, a statement of faith, um, which is beautifully written. But I thought I'd just share what the Salvation Army's doctrine is on holiness. It's a little bit shorter than the statement of faith that, uh, that the biblical seminary has. It says this, we believe that it is the privilege of all believers to be wholly sanctified and that their whole spirit and soul and body may be preserved blameless into the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is this doctrine? This doctrine reminds us that holiness is not about uh, external behavior alone, uh, but it's about the spirit-led transformation that changes from the inside out, allowing us to live lives that reflect Christ. And so holiness is a journey. It's a journey and sometimes it can feel confusing. It can feel challenging. And especially when we don't fully understand what God is doing in our lives, 
And so I think of the story in the Old Testament of Joseph. You guys remember what Joseph went through? He faced betrayal and slavery and false accusations and imprisonment. And through all of these hardships, maybe he didn't fully understand what God was doing. Perhaps, right? When we read those stories, we think he surely didn't fully understand why these things were happening to him, even though he was faithfully following God. And yet in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, he tells his brothers this, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And so Joseph's trials were part of God's greater plan to prepare him to serve Uh, to save his family and countless others. When we we read that story, we remember, you know, we we know that story from Sunday school when we were kids. And it reminds me of the great theologian, Mr. Miyagi. Oh, Yes, yes. You guys remember Mr. Miyagi? Well, the the lessons that he was trying to give Daniel's son, all right? (laughs) And so if you remember the movie, uh, Daniel was very irritated and frustrated when he was first saying, Mr. Miyagi, I want to learn how to, I want to learn karate. I want to be able to defend myself. And so he put them on, Mr. Miyagi put him on some very mundane task, didn't he? Wax on, wax off, paint the fence, right? Um, if you like the newer karate kid, what was it? The jacket, pick the jacket up, hang the jacket, put the jacket on, right? But I think we all grew up around the original karate kid. As I look around the room, I think we're, we're more familiar with that one. Right? Um, yeah, maybe his student. Yes, that's right. Dre from the karate kid, uh, pick the jacket up, hang the jacket, put it on. And so I, I think there, uh, you know, obviously Daniel didn't fully understand what God was doing or what, what Mr. Miyagi was doing, right? These repetitive tasks, waxing the cars, painting the fence, but each moment was, each movement was building strength for a skill for later on. And in the same way, God often works in our lives in ways that we don't fully understand. We don't fully grasp it at the time. And he uses these experience that he puts us in to shape us and to strengthen us and to make us holy and to prepare us prepare us for a purpose that we may not yet understand or see. And he puts us in these places. And so I thought today we'd look at just a couple of aspects of holiness today. Uh, First of all, a call to be set apart. Uh, The transformation of our hearts and the courage to stand against worldly pressures. And so holiness as a call to be set apart from worldly values. If you look in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it's a very familiar passage of scripture. We've probably used it many times in the past decade as we look at what's going on around the world. Uh, It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. And so in this passage that you've looked at many times before, Paul is urging us to make a clear choice. We're either shaped by the world's values or by God's truth. And it's that simple, right? Conforming to the pattern of the world means aligning ourselves with the world's ambitions, with the world's values, with the world's definition of successes, which often, very often, goes against God's purposes for us. If you look in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26, it echoes this. It says that you are to be holy uh, to me because I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. He set us apart. And so in the Old Testament, God called Israel to be distinct. In the Old Testament, God called Israel to be a people who lived differently in their relationships, in their worship, and in their commitment to God. They were meant to reflect God's character to a watching world, just as we are today, right? We are certainly being watched by those around us. And they're taking notes. Look what they did today. And so holiness means daily evaluating 
areas where we might be subtly conforming to the world's values, like daily taking a look at our life and saying, how am I conforming? Are we allowing the culture to influence our priorities and attitudes? Or are we anchored in God's truth? We need to choose what we consume, right? And how we spend our time wisely, making sure that our minds and our hearts are renewed by God's word. I think about the the hymn that I read, Come Thou Founts. It says, tune my heart to sing thy grace. I mean, it just reminds us that we need we need to stay in tune. Our hearts need to be in tune. Need to stay in harmony with the Lord. Um, and so we have to ask ourselves. Sometimes we have to do some introspective thinking, and we have to ask ourselves: In what areas do I need God to tune my heart so that I can continue to resist conforming to this world? Are there areas in my life that I tend to follow worldly trends rather than God's holy truth? And we have to think about that for ourselves. And then we have holiness as a transformation. It's not just a behavior. We're transformed. And so in 2 Corinthians 5.17, again, another very familiar uh, verse, it tells us this. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And so holiness isn't about behavior alone. It's a transformation of our entire being, everything there is about us. To be in Christ means that we have a new, a new nature, one that's shaped by his spirit rather than by our own desires. And in John 3.3, 3, Jesus tells Nicodemus this, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And so this idea of born again shows that holiness is more than just self-improvement. It's a spiritual renewal that reshapes our hearts, that reshapes our motivations, and it reshapes our character. Totally transformed, renewed, a different creation. And so Holiness is an ongoing process where we allow God's spirit to change us deeply. We are, uh, and so are we focusing on the outward actions alone or are we surrendering all of our lives to God's transforming power? Everything there is of us, just like Daniel on the karate, who, karate kid who couldn't see the purpose in his training at first. He didn't understand it. We may experience seasons in our life where God is shaping us ways we don't quite understand. We're not saying, Lord, where is this going? What are you doing in my life? And we don't fully understand it. And holiness often requires us to trust his purpose, even in the small everyday moments, wherever he's leading us. And I think about this hymn again. It says, Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. I mean, this line kind of acknowledges our tendency to drift away. I, I, think, I think in that song, the, that verse speaks most directly to me. Prone to wonder, Lord, I, I don't want to drift, Lord. I want to stay true to you. And so it's only by allowing God to transform our hearts that we can resist this tendency to drift when he transforms us. We can resist the tendency to conform. And so I have to ask myself, maybe we ask you this morning is, am I allowing God to work on my heart so that I don't wander? Holiness is not about perfection, but about the continual surrender to the Spirit's work. So some things for us that ask ourselves is, am I allowing God to transform my hearts and attitudes, or am I only focused on outward actions? And what areas of my life do I struggle to allow God to change? Is there something in your life you've not fully surrendered over to the Lord? And the last uh, thing this morning is 
holiness as a stand against worldly agendas and pressures. Here in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 11, it says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Holiness involves a willingness to stand firm for God. Especially when the world's pressures push us to compromise. And Paul reminds us that this isn't this stand isn't just taken in our own strength, but it's taken in the power and the protection of God himself. So it's not in your own strength, it's with the Lord. And, and in today's culture, standing for holiness requires courage, doesn't it? Real courage, just as it did for the believers throughout history. I mean, if you look in the book of Daniel, we see the prophet choosing to continue his prayers, even when a decree is made that it is punishable by death. Holiness often calls us to stand firm for God's truth, even when it might bring us criticism or opposition or being canceled or doxxed or whatever it is that's going on today, right? So in a world that is filled with voices, pushing agendas and ideas that contradicts God's truth, standing for holiness may mean that we are going against popular opinion or that we are going against cultural shifts and the trends of this world. And this could be as simple as choosing not to gossip or as challenging as speaking up for biblical truth to a world that twists it to their own agendas. So it's important to know that living a life of holiness isn't about isolating ourselves from the world, but it's about being a light in the world, standing boldly and lovingly for God's truth among those who twist and conform and shift it. Yeah, I think about the hymn here, Oh to grace, how great a debtor. And this just reminds us of the dependency on God's grace and strength. We must depend on him. How can I rely on God's grace and strength to stand in a world that opposes his ways? When I look around, and everything that's happening around us is against God's word. And we think 20 years ago, this wasn't acceptable. And yet here we are daily finding new things that, oh, this is what God's word says. And this is what it means. And this is how it lines up with these cultural trends. And so we have to stand true and firm on God's holy word, his unchanging word. Um, and so I have some questions for us to ask ourselves this morning is what areas of my life do I feel pressured to compromise my sake, my faith for the sake of comfort or acceptance? Are you in a place where you have to compromise for comfort or to be accepted? And how can I rely on God's strength to stand firm against these pressures, spending time with him more? and more and digging into his holy word. And then where is God calling me to be bolder in my faith? Is he leading you somewhere? So we have to examine our relationship with the Lord. And remember holiness is not something we achieve on our own. It's a relationship, surrender and reliance on Jesus. And so we have to allow the Lord to renew our minds, transform our hearts, and strengthen our resolve. And we grow every day more and more like him, love like him, talk like him, walk like him, All right? And so we have to consider what our current relationship with Jesus is like. Are we set apart? Or are we blending in with the world? I thought just for a minute, uh, as I wrap up my time, that I'd uh, f look at this song 
come thou fount. Just to give us a moment of reflection. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, it sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Oh, here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Father, we're so blessed today. You've woken us up and we're standing upright and we've got your breath in our lungs and we just praise you with all that we are. Lord, we thank you for your holy word this morning. We thank you for your hymns and thinking of the saints that have gone before us and those who have impacted our lives. But Lord, most importantly today, we thank you that you are calling us to be different. You're setting us apart for something and we may not even fully understand it or know what's going on yet, but you know, we know that you are preparing us, setting our hearts and focusing in on you. So Lord, we just, Lord, I ask that you strengthen us in this weary world, in this world that seems out of control and crazy, Lord, that you will give us strength to stand firm on the foundation of your holy word and that you will help us to live righteously among the people here. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice that he made for us. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins that he offers. And Lord, we just love you. And we know that you first loved us. We know that you, what you've done for us, Lord. And so we just praise you this morning. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And we look forward to seeing where you're leading us and taking us and opportunities to boldly share about Jesus. And we pray this in Christ's name, amen.